Hello guys and welcome to Dancers Biology. Um, we are going to continue our discussion on to our alternative splicing that we um, explained in our other lecture. And in this lecture, we're going to get into the diagrammatic explanation of alternative splicing. Now, alternative splicing, as we know, will produce different, different um, exons, combinations, and thereby end up giving you different, different proteins in our systems. Now, um, here the first process is this uh, DNA strand where we have the genes, the DNA is going to be copied into RNA here. This is an RNA strand. And this process where DNA is copied to RNA is what we call transcription. Transcription is a process, it's a biological process where our DNA is copied into um, RNA strands. Now, this RNA strand is not a ready version of the RNA because it contains body, um, body introns here and different different exons here. Um, for those of you who don't know what introns and exons are, introns are some of the segments of genes that do not code for any protein. They did not produce any proteins, whereas the the exons, one, two, three, four, five, the exons are the segments of the genes that will produce proteins at the end of the um, day. So uh, therefore, we need to separate or to remove these introns from these exons here, since they should not supposed to be um, joined when we are to make our proteins, because if they are left like this, they end up giving some complications and some phenotypes that are not necessary in an organism. So they need to be removed. They removed, they are removed by a process called alternative splicing. Uh, alternative splicing or splicing process rather. So splicing process will remove all these introns from the exons. So later these exons, they are going to um, combine, that is here. The splicing process will give you the combination of um, combination of different, different exons. But, but um, normally this exon can produce its own phenotype and each of these exons can produce their own phenotypes. But we are going to see situations where different exons will combine. Like in the case of this, uh, one, two, three, four, five, um, they are combined, but in a different manner. Here we have one, two, four, and five. This third exon is absent here. So this combination is going to produce a different version of protein. We call the isoprotein with this one. The proteins that are similar, but they show a, a, a little bit dif uh, functional differences in our system. So this combination also, since only exon 4 is absent here, the protein that this one is going to produce through the translation is going to be different from this protein. And at the end of the day, you see the proteins are going to be different. So this protein, the function that it is going to play in our system and this protein are going to be quite different. And this is important. Since our system, um, different, different tissues needs different proteins for their proper functioning. So if alternative splicing did not come in play as a mean of gene regulation, we're going to see lots and lots of deficiency in in vital proteins. And this will bring some complications. That's why we have so many syndromes in our body. But alternative splicing can conquer that problem since different, different proteins are allowed to be formed from a single gene. So we can have a, a, a way of tackling the problem of protein deficiency. So this is all what we have today. And I hope the video is really, really gonna help. If you have any question regarding alternative splicing process, don't hesitate to um, contact me via my regular email address or via my YouTube channel, and I shall get back to you. And until then, I would like to say enjoy the video and feel free to um, get back to me in case of any area that you did not understand. Take care.